Welcome back to Math 21. This is Rue. In today's lecture, we'll talk about implicit differentiation, derivatives of logarithmic and exponential functions. This lecture is divided into three parts. The first part is on implicit differentiation. The second part is on derivatives of logarithmic functions. And the last part is on derivatives of exponential functions. So we begin this lecture on the method of implicit differentiation. Okay, let's begin the first part of our lecture then. Consider two equations in two variables, say x and y. First, we have y equal to x squared minus 1. And the second equation here on the right is y squared equal to x plus 1. Now, if y is a differentiable function of x, then the first equation here, we can explicitly define the function as x squared minus 1 and easily get the derivative. And this is what we have been doing until now. Now, consider the equation on the right. Here you have y squared. So again, if y is a differentiable function of x, in this case, there are two possible functions that are defined. The first one is square root of x plus 1, and the second one is minus square root of x plus 1. So here, the function is implicitly defined by the equation y squared equal to x plus 1. Now, the question that we want to raise is, if we have a function that is implicitly defined by an equation, how do we get the derivative? For example, if you have y equal to f of x, a function defined implicitly by the equation x cubed minus 2xy minus 3y minus 6 equal to 0, how do we evaluate dy over dx here? Well, to do that, we can actually solve for y from this equation, and we get x cubed minus 6 all over 2x plus 3, which is written as a quotient. Hence, to get the derivative of y with respect to x, we apply the quotient rule. So that's low d high minus high d low over low squared. So again, low, so 2x plus 3, d high, so the derivative of the numerator, 3x squared, minus high, so that is x cubed minus 6, times d low, so the derivative of the denominator, which is 2 all over low squared, so that is quantity 2x plus 3 squared. So to simplify that, the derivative is 4x cubed plus 9x squared plus 12 all over the quantity 2x plus 3 squared. So for this particular equation, we were lucky, right? Because we were able to solve for y and then get the derivative the way that we have been doing until now. Suppose instead we have a function defined implicitly by an equation for which y cannot be isolated easily. How do we find the derivative of y with respect to x then? Suppose we have equations like x to the 4, y cubed minus 7xy equal to 7. So it's quite difficult to solve for y here. Or equations like tangent of quantity x squared minus 2xy equal to y, right? So in these cases, to find the derivative of y with respect to x, we use the method of implicit differentiation. So how do we go about implicit differentiation? Well, first, you think of the variable y as a differentiable function of variable x. Next, you differentiate both sides of the equation and use chain rule where it's necessary. Lastly, once you've done taking all the derivative, you simplify and then you solve for dy over dx, and you're done. Okay. So let's try the method of implicit differentiation and find the derivative of y with respect to x when y, as a differentiable function of x, is implicitly defined in this equation x cubed minus 2xy minus 3y minus 6 equal to 0. So what do we do first? We take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to x. On the left side of the equation, we take the derivative term by term. The first term here, the derivative with respect to x is 3x squared minus, so the second term will be 2 times the derivative of the product xy, minus 3 times the derivative of y, minus the derivative of 6, which is a constant, so that gives us 0, which is equal to the derivative on the right side, which is also constant, that is 0. So this will then give us 3x squared minus, so the remaining derivative there, you have the derivative of a product, so employ the product rule, so that will give us the derivative of the first factors, which is 1 times, we just take the second factor, y, plus x times the derivative of the second factor with respect to x, so that is dy over dx, 
minus 3 derivative of y with respect to x. So we can write that also as dy over dx equal to 0. So if you simplify that, we get 3x squared minus 2y minus 2x times derivative of y with respect to x minus 3 times the derivative of y with respect to x equal to 0. So we can now solve for dy over dx, and that should give us 3x squared minus 2y all over 2x plus 3. And that's it. We've evaluated the derivative of y with respect to x using the implicit differentiation. But wait a minute. We solved this earlier already, and we got 4x cubed plus 9x squared plus 12 all over quantity 2x plus 3 squared. So if we go back to our solution using the implicit differentiation, and we further note that y is equal to x cubed minus 6 all over 2x plus 3, this will allow us to write dy over dx in terms of x. So if we substitute this in y and further simplify the expression, we should get a quotient equal to 4x cubed plus 9x squared plus 12 all over quantity 2x plus 3 squared, which is the same derivative that we got when we explicitly derived y. Okay, let's now consider an equation where we cannot explicitly solve for y. For example, here we have x raised to the 4 times y cubed minus 7xy equal to 7. So to compute the derivative of y with respect to x, we need to make use of the implicit differentiation. So remember here, y is a differentiable function of x, right? So what do we do next? We take the derivative on both sides of the equation. On the left side of the equation, we take the derivative term by term, right? So for the first term, it's written as a product, right? Product of x raised to the 4 and y cubed. So to get the derivative, we employ the product rule. So we get the derivative of x to the 4. That would be 4x cubed times y cubed plus x to the 4 times the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. So remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So we have to apply the chain rule. So we get 3y squared times the derivative of y with respect to x. For the second term, we have minus 7 times the derivative of the product xy. So again, by the product rule, we should have the derivative of x, which is 1 times y, plus x times the derivative of y with respect to x on the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, we get the derivative of 7 with respect to x, so that's a constant that should give us 0. So if you simplify this and solve for dy over dx, we get minus 4x cubed y cubed plus 7y all over 3x to the 4 y squared minus 7x. There you have it. We were able to determine the derivative of y with respect to x using implicit differentiation. Okay, let's try another example, okay? So suppose we have y, which is a differentiable function of x, that's implicitly defined in this equation tangent of quantity x squared minus 2xy equal to y. So let's evaluate the derivative of y with respect to x. So for this particular equation, it's difficult for us to isolate y in terms of x, right? So we evaluate the derivative using implicit differentiation. Next, we take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to x. Let's evaluate first the derivative on the left side of the equation. So here we have tangent of quantity x squared minus 2xy, right? So this is written as a composition of two functions. The outermost function is tangent, and the inner function is x squared minus 2xy. So we take first the derivative of tangent using the chain rule, so that gives us second squared of the inner function, x squared minus 2xy, times the derivative of the inner function. So we have there two terms. The first term, the derivative of that with respect to x is 2x minus 2 times the derivative of the product of xy. So we've done this earlier already. So this gives us y plus x times the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, so that's done for the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, we just get the derivative of y with respect to x. So we can write that as dy over dx. Thus, if we solve for dy over dx, what we get is 2 times quantity x minus y 
times second squared quantity x squared minus 2xy all over 1 plus 2x times second squared of quantity x squared minus 2xy. And that's it. We evaluated the derivative here in terms of implicit differentiation. So to recap, if you're given a function that's implicitly defined in an equation, you have two options. First, if you can try to explicitly solve for, say, y in terms of x, if that's possible, then you just do differentiation explicitly as we've done before. However, if it's impossible to isolate y in the equation or solve explicitly for y in the equation, then we have to use the method of implicit differentiation. And that's it for the first part of this lecture. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. You can watch this video again if there are certain parts that were not that clear to you. And when you're ready, come see me in the next part of the video where we'll talk about the derivatives of logarithmic functions. I'll see you there.